Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today we'll take a look at a book titled Inagawa Cemetery Chapel and Visitor Center by David Chipperfield Architects, uh, published by Lixil in collaboration with Koenig. Inagawa Cemetery is located on a steep site in the Hokusetsu mountain range of the Hyogo Prefecture, approximately 40 kilometers north of Osaka. The cemetery is laid out across terraces and bisected by a monumental flight of steps leading up to a shrine at the highest point, an axis that orients the whole project. The chapel and visitor center are designed as a marked threshold between the outer world and a quieter space within for contemplation. The program is formally arranged under a single sloping roof plane, following the view line from the entrance up to the shrine. The rooms of the visitor center open onto the courtyard garden, while the secluded chapel remains separate. An unadorned and quiet room with minimal heating and artificial lighting offers a non-denominational contemplative space, pure in its form. Relying on indirect sunlight from the gardens on either side, the chapel visitor finds seclusion and their focus is drawn to the essential rhythms of time through the natural indicators of daylight fluctuation and seasonal foliage changes. On the diagonally opposite corner of the courtyard is the visitor center. Two large rooms at the lower end of the roof provide for family gatherings and commemorations. The visitor's lounge offers an informal area for resting and eating. The memorial room, which can be separated into three smaller rooms by pleated curtains made with washi paper on fabric, offers space for formal feasts after rituals. A range of uh, furniture designed specifically for the project consisting of simple informal painted wooden chairs, benches, tables can be rearranged depending on the occasion. Following the axial link between the two ends of the site, a reel carries water down the, the middle of the staircase from the top of the mountain directly towards the building. As it approaches the lower part of the staircase near the chapel, the running water slows and pools as it collects into a trough, then is diverted through a new underground channel under the site to the nearby canal. In a conversation with David Chipperfield and Hideyuki Ozawa, Thomas Trout said, My first impression was that the cemetery was difficult to photograph. That is not a bad thing. Not everything needs to be photographed. After spending an hour or two here, I thought, oh, I can sense David's personality coming through in the work. The building follows the sloping mountain line and highlights the horizontal, a contrast to the vertical gravestones and the sky above the mountainous landscape. It is not a shy or modest building, yet it is also not intrusive, it strikes a respectful tone. You look at the given, see what exists and steer toward what could be possible, how you can contribute. The details of the building are extremely refined and make you think of a delicate drawing. The public landscape is at the heart of the building. When you go to Japanese gardens or temples, you see attempts to marry wild nature with a man-made garden whereas with typical English or French gardens, it is the complete opposite. Rocks do not look artificially arranged, but rather as if they just happen to be there. It has to do with the imagination of the inner mind, but inner images are fluid, they escape quickly. This, like those gardens, is a place that you have to come to in order to experience. It seduces you to look at it. Hideyuki Osawa, the client, said To me, architecture is not so much about form or details, but more about what people feel when they step into it. A project would be a failure if visitors could not feel what we felt or be moved like we were moved. David and I have a certain chemistry, just like Thomas and I do. David's sensibilities are so refined that it was easy to connect with him on an exciting level. We can play off each other. 
That was the key to our mutual understanding, which was so crucial to bringing the architecture here, no, the place here, such a wonderful fruition. David Chipperfield said, I think architecture is about making place, definitely. Architecture has so many different responsibilities and potentialities too. The first is the physical, you can make a floor, a wall, a shelter. Then you have an opportunity to make a hole in the shelter and have the hole create a relationship, exposing and connecting you to the outside. Once you start playing with that dynamic, it can be fascinating. On the other hand, architecture goes beyond the physical. It has an organizing power, the potentiality to be societal. As architects, we jump between these two potentialities. I believe that you have to combine both. Hidesan created an environment where we could experiment with both of these issues. What this place could be physically, which is important, but also what it could be in terms of meaning, from the perspectives of society and the people who come here to pay their respects. He created an opportunity where an architect could comfortably experiment with these things. Often, clients are not interested in these societal issues. They pay you just to design a building. How can we lead a necessity into becoming something more? That is the issue. Most clients are motivated by necessity, needing something commercially or practically. Then we lay another aspiration on top, thinking we can do more from it. Hideyuki Osawa said, Finding a common ground is a process with many layers. It is much more about the differences in awareness than about differences in culture. It depends on the nature of the person. If the awareness is low, the level of the issues that come up is low, and that frustrates communication. Even with a Japanese architect with no cultural gaps in play, a difference in awareness would make it difficult to communicate. Compared to cultural gaps, the bigger deciding factor is awareness compatibility, how you think and whether you look at things on a fundamental level. Without that shared awareness, it would be difficult to make things together, even if both parties were Japanese. Thomas Strat said, Hide and I have known each other for a long time. During the time I showed with uh, Gallery Shimada in Tokyo, he collected my work and we started to become friends. I always find him easy to talk to, maybe because of his education in the United States. One day, when we met in New York, he told me about his new interest in architecture and his intention to improve the atmosphere of the building structures at the cemeteries of his foundation. He wanted to create a more dignified experience for the people who came uh, to bury the ashes of their loved ones. I found it very touching that someone would want to let the analysis of a human experience lead to a particular architectural expression. This is, in principle, about a shared experience. Initially, he wanted to work with Japanese architects only. David and I met a few years earlier in Berlin, and I knew about his love for Japan. It was a pleasure telling David about my Japanese friend's idea and suggesting that Hide come to Venice when David curated the Architectural Biennale in 2012 so that they could meet. We often discuss things with friends and get excited floating ideas to each other. Most of the time, of course, nothing comes of it. In this case, though, something did happen. I had an insight that it could work out. Whatever it was, that was all it took. David Chipperfield As a collector, Hide San has a tolerance for an artist's sensibilities. He's used to artists. Artists are difficult, often very particular. When it comes to collaborating with a good architect, he already has patience. He was very generous and respectful to the idea of listening to the architect. In Anglo-Saxon culture, the architect tends to be a service provider. Instead of experiencing cultural insight from an architect, you want professional service, performance, image and hopefully a little bit of promotion. 
We see artists as strange animals, thinking on our behalf of new ideas and investigating culture. But architects do not fall into that category of perception. They are part of the hard, real world. But unlike the Anglo-Saxon culture, Japanese culture still holds the role of the architect in very high regard. Architects are service providers, of course, given our market-driven culture. Architects have to think that way, and therefore they also become a little bit obsequious. We learn not to be too difficult. If you are difficult, you lose the project. We listen to the client. The client says, I'm not sure about this, and we often say, of course, you're right. We could change that. I think good clients, and Hide is a very good client, wants us to say, I'm not sure either. There is a sensibility about this, a Japanese sensibility. Hideyuki Osawa I have a basic philosophy. A wonderful piece of architecture hinges on a trinity of spirit. First, the client and the architect have to respect each other so that they can discuss anything to reach a solution, which the builder then shares in. The three parties share the same goal, passion and feelings. The book contains photographs by Risako Suzuki and Thomas Struth, uh, was designed by John Morgan and Adrian Vasquez, and printed in Japan by Tosho Printing. Ask for it at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video.